Hello, everyone, and welcome to an unexpected podcast. I am your host, Evan. Um, today with me, I have, as always, Rainier and Mick. And also, I have a special guest, Alessandro, who's from Italy. Um, we also may have Devin joining in today. Uh, we'll see what happens. We never know with him. So we're going to start off by going over a list, and then we're going to move into our main topic of the day, which is talking about Assault of Han Helm's Deep, how to beat it, and how to play it. Um, we're also going to have Alessandro, who actually played Assault Upon Helm's Deep at the ETC, talk about some of his games and sort of give you a very high-level analysis of the army. All right, so let's move into our list. All right, so our list is from um, the ever-incredible Mooch Bag. Um, he says that he's got a list uh, here for review, if we would be so kind, which we are. Um, it's 700 points, six bows plus a bolt thrower, a little bit of a spoiler there, uh, 11 might and 43 models. Um, just looking at it, this appears to be a Minas Tirith Fiefdoms Alliance. In it, we have Faramir with bow and heavy armor. He's the leader with six rangers of Gondor with spears. We've got Ingold with 10 warriors of Minas Tirith with shields, a warrior of Minas Tirith with shield and spear, and one with shield, spear, and banner. In the next warband, we have an Avenger bolt thrower with swift reload, and then four long on foot, nine axemen, and Angbor with nine clansmen of Lamadon. So it seems to be a fairly simple list um, at 700 points. It's got a good number of models. It's got a good number of might. Um, some things to look at changing though, um, we can sort of debate on this a little bit more, uh, afterwards, but I'm personally a fan of not taking swift reload on the Avenger bolt thrower. I feel like it's much more useful if you want to get more shooting in with the Avenger bolt thrower to just take a second one because it's only 30 points more. And you also get three extra models with the Avenger bolt thrower when you take it. Um, some other things about this list, I noticed that there's no march. Um, I would try and get that in, maybe swapping Ingold for Irolas or Ingold for Madril. Just being able to march um, with an army is super important, so not having it in there um, is kind of rough. Um, and just sort of as the a last couple of uh, things that I'll say before I pass it off to you guys, um, I think Forlong should definitely be on a horse. It increases his heading power by a ton, um, and it's very cheap. So if you have the ability to either get the unreleased miniatures model or convert them, then I would absolutely do that. And finally, I think you guys can talk about this a bit more, but I would probably change the warband makeup of the, uh, the Minas Tirith and the fiefdoms to maybe mix the troops together a little bit more instead of isolating them in their different warbands. Cool. All right. So, does anybody else have anything to say? Yeah. So, um, the first thing that stands out to me is that there's Faramir here. Um, <laughs> some people argue that he's perhaps not the best of the Gondorian heroes. Although one of our podcast hosts, Rob Crone, absolutely swears by him. Like he seems, <laughs> he seems like a massive fan of Faramir. Um, he's not here, unfortunately. So I'm, I'm not really sure why he loves Faramir so much. Um, so we're going to have to wait for him at some point to, to tell us more about that. But personally, I would possibly look into swapping Faramir for someone else, um, be it either mm -hmm. uh, a Huron or um, look into potentially upgrading into uh, into a Boromir. I'm not sure whether... Um, Would Huron do any good since there's no other Hero of Valor? He would automatically... I mean, yeah. he's 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 not Faramir, and and just by just <laughs> just by the virtue of not being Faramir, he's already mad. Forlong. Forlong is a hero of Valor as well, so he oh, could okay. protect mm, Forlong, and true. he's Gondor technically. Mm. So yeah. also Angbor, I think. Mm. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, well, he's a hero of Valor as well. Yeah, I mean, I personally, uh, I'm not a fan of a bolt thrower, so I would be looking to try to upgrade Faramir uh, into Boromir. Um, by dropping the the ball thrower, um, but other than that, it's um, yeah. The other thing is, Farmir with bow 
is another one of those things where if you're going to use him, then I would say uh, put him on a horse, give him a lance, uh, because that actually makes him uh, quite 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 strong in, home, in combat. Um, but with a bow, essentially, he's not very good fighting on food, and he only has one shot. So personally, um, I think it's like the worst of all worlds, really. Yeah, I feel like for every hero in the game, excluding Thranduil or anyone with a mount above 10 points, you should put them on a horse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what do you guys think of Angor, though? I was never really a fan of him um, outside of his courage. I think he's just trying to get a fearless option into his army. I don't think Angbor is necessarily bad. I don't play with Angbor. Um, I've never really... Oh, then again, I'm not a big fiefdoms player either. But if I did play fiefdoms a lot, it wouldn't be him. Um, so does he give? Does he give all the clansmen fearless? Yeah. In fact, uh, because it's a pure alliance, he gives literally everyone in this entire army fearless. Well, okay, six inches cool. of him, but yeah. So he's not a tear. Like just for that alone, that actually has a lot of use, especially you know. I mean, yeah, sure, he's getting the plus one courage, and then I guess he gets it from his army bonus as well. So it almost makes fearless, you know, not as relevant. But um, wait, so he gives fearless even even to range of Gondor from Farmir? Yeah. So and I'm pretty sure if it, it he maybe he doesn't affect Gondor. It's just all models no. from the the fiefdoms. Oh, no, it's only in the fiefdoms army. army? Uh, which, okay, which actually not not to interrupt you, Devin, but I think sort of leads on to my next point, which is I'm not entirely sure how useful Angbor is in this list necessarily. Um, he does provide the six inch banner, um, which is good, obviously. Um, though he also has a warrior Minas Tirith with banner, so it's not the end of the world um, if he doesn't have it. Um, and also uh, Angbor provides the fearless to mainly, uh, mainly the back rank troops. So obviously having fearless is nice but generally when you take Angbor is in a pure fiefdoms army where you can basically just say, okay, my entire army is fearless now. Um, so he's not doing that, um, which I think uh, may not justify uh, him being included in the list. Then in that case, I would almost wonder if like getting rid of a bunch of these clansmen instead, uh, swapping Rangers of Gondor with, you know, Reasonably, like with the uh, Black Reveal archers, would be a better use. But then I guess you have no spear supports for your Warriors Minas Tirith at that point. But I mean, maybe get Man at Arms in there. Um, well, you can't. Well, so with Firemir, you would put Spearmen. Basically, you take all the Rangers out of Firemir's Warband, replace them with Spear Armed Warriors, and then you replace the nine clansmen, six of them with, you know, Black Reveal archers, and then stick it with. Uh, Doing her, I mean, if you really want the bows, <laughs> like I mean, that's I'm not thinking you're making the list stronger, but I just like those guys better than the Rangers. So, but I don't know. I I, I mean, it seems like a pretty weak idea. You're, you're losing other benefits, fight for, and you know, so. Yeah, I mean, to me, it yeah, it seems in this list, there's just a, like a little bit of of everything. There's like a little bit of fearless, a little bit of ball thrower, a few bows, but not that many. Um, heroes themselves are fine, but obviously Forlong should should have a horse and Farmer should have a horse. Yeah, I I think we're all definitely in agreement of like yeah. why are these guys not mounted? Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I'm actually surprised he does. He, you know, he probably honestly doesn't have a mounted because he doesn't own the model. It's it's probably exactly that simple. It might be a Wissy Wig tournament, and he just doesn't have it. Which, in that case, honestly, most tournaments will allow you to proxy models. Like, yeah. if you have, like, especially if you can just paint maybe one Knight of Minas Tirith, like, worst case scenario. I mean, I probably wouldn't use a Knight of Minas Tirith to proxy for Faramir, but if you did, just put a big, you know, something, some marker around it. So that way, the, you know, everyone knows, hey, that one cavalry model you have is in Faramir. <laughs> like, make him glow, but, you know, paint him differently. Um, but most people won't mind. So, but it seems like we're throwing around a lot of ideas here because I mean, 
ideas to get rid of the bolt thrower or get rid of, you know, I, I think the the one I think we all agree on is Angbor could probably go. So, Evan, you're the one who mentioned that. Who do you think you should replace him with? There's, there's a couple options, honestly. And I think that's why we were throwing so many ideas out is because in sort of like this Condor Fiefdoms Alliance, there are so many different ways so many you options. can go with this. Um, I think what I'm looking at right now, and I think this definitely changes sort of what he wanted from the list, but it's it's what comes to my mind first, which is um, dropping Angbor, um, dropping Swift Reload off of the Avenger Bolt Thrower, because I think it's a bit redundant and not overly useful, um, and then either changing Forlong the Fat to uh, Imrahil, and then changing Faramir into uh into Hurin or changing Faramir into Boromir um and then sort of keeping the rest as in with Angbor not not in it and then making up for the the loss of the auto pass courage from Angbor by getting a bunch of fountain courts now obviously this is a, a big change to the list yeah you're a lot um, more Gondor heavy at that so, point. yeah I'd, I'd take this with a grain of salt but um I think just sort of this style of list um if i was going to make it super super competitive um i don't know if i would run something quite like this uh, yeah, alessandro I... do you have uh, anything to add sorry mick yeah no worries. yeah um regarding the bolt thrower for example i'd love to exchange it with the trabuket i i like the trabuket much more in competitive terms comparing it to the ball thrower it's marginally uh, more expensive right like 70 points or something like it's points 80 more. points it's yeah, a book yeah. it this is 75 points with a swift reload i yeah. think so it's five points more but uh, in some situation the force forces the opponents to to deploy differently um and with all these war bands you you don't want like a line with line approach but mm. you probably hope hope that they will uh, divide the army. I actually like Angbor a lot. I think he's very, very good for for the point cost because he has he's one of the two strikes that you have in the army. But I totally agree about the two horses on the on Forlong and Faramir. Yeah, probably the best in, in competitive terms, in my opinion, would be to have only one uh, Minas Tirith hero um and for sure add like uh, the um, uh what's the name of the um uh, of the ranger from um, ranger hero from fifth domes uh, here doing here yeah right. yeah i mean those archers are just are just they're terrifying. like the scariest thing in the game <laughs> yeah yeah they're terrifying uh, i played once against like 15 um black black archer veil or something shooting to to me it was terrible <laughs> really <laughs> terrible so but the list is nice the list is nice yeah my and, mind you know yeah. I, you almost have to try to fit black root veil archers i feel like they're just one of the crown jewels of yeah of the fiefdom's army yeah. I, actually, especially over range really like the idea um yeah you like the idea a lot of because what the trebuchet does right is Unlike the bolt thrower, which has a 24 inch range, which I do like the bolt thrower. I think they're both uh, really good options, but the trebuchet um, is more forcing to your opponent. It will basically force them to move towards you because uh, you never know if on that one turn, the trebuchet is going to hit your hero dead on. You're going to fail all of your fate points and die. Um, so it's extremely terrifying to play against and its damage potential is huge. So it forces you forward. And then obviously, once you get within 24 inches, um, your Black Root Veil archers will start uh, shooting the crap out of you. So I think that's definitely a uh, another very good way um, to to build this list. I think I think probably what a lot of our advice boils down to is lean into something. And by that, I mean, lean into some powerful aspect of this list, either into the 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 big heroes the strong heroes on horses or uh lean into the powerful shooting with the black root fail archers and the uh, trebuchet um 
but uh, just try to add in some heroes on horses for extra hitting power um, and pick something you want to be good at and uh, focus on that thing, I think is sort of the key to success with a list like this. Yeah, definitely. Like if you're if you're gonna go with the trebuchet, then uh, maximize your uh, blackwood veil archers as well. So then, no matter what happens, you have you have high numbers, you have a lot of shards. You can't really go wrong with that. And get your horses. All right. Well, without uh, yeah, changing the list drastically, that's probably about the best advice we're gonna be able to give at this point. <laughs> So we we threw a lot at you here. So um, take what you want to take, uh, leave what you want to leave um, and uh, have fun playing the list. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's move on. So uh, moving on to uh, talking about the main topic of the episode, which is, of course, um, Assault Upon Helm's Deep. Um, oh, so does anybody have the... Uh, Anybody have the book out in front of them that they can uh, can read off the uh, the profiles? Yeah, I do. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I was about to say, Thanks. I'm like, I gotta get it off my phone. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, all right, <laughs> Alessandro's got it, so we're good. Um, okay. well, it's very easy. So, <laughs> so basically, <laughs> there's, there's ballistas, there's ballistas. <laughs> basically, yeah, <laughs> you have uh, Hurukai captain. So the army composition you have as heroes. Yurukai Captain or Yurukai Shaman with all the options available. As Warriors, you have Yurukai Warrior with all options available. Isengard Troll with, uh, you can swap uh, the sword for the spear and you can take the wardroom for 15 points, I think. Then you have Yurukai Berserkers, Yurukai Demolition Team, and Isengard Assault Ballista with all the options available. So basically, <clears throat> one of Yurukai captain is the leader, and you're forced to have at least one Yurukai captain. Um, you have the same bonus as Isengard, so you, you do courage test for being broken at 66% of the army dead. Uh, your leader has three wounds and three attacks instead of two, then you have six more models for each warband um, available, and all your uh, siege weapon reroll to hit and to scatter during the shoot phase, and all the demolition charge you may roll, you may roll twice rather than once and pick either results. Well... I don't can, you can so you roll them both at the same time and pick yes one. oh okay yeah. all right yeah 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 <laughs> yeah so 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 what's that yeah what's that, the, what's the, what's the whole idea behind the list yeah you basically <laughs> take, take as many ballistas as you can right um do you know um have you uh, have you all watched uh, the matrix I'm I'm sure you have yeah right? you know there's there's this moment in uh in the matrix where Keanu Reeves goes. We need guns. <laughs> Load of guns. <laughs> so, so, so this is this is basically the same thing. We need ballistas. Lots of ballistas. <laughs> and still maximize crossbows. <laughs> yeah. Maximize no, it, crossbows. It, it, it reminds me of like a game of Age of Empires when you just buy those like ballistas and stuff and you're just killing all the infantry. <laughs> yeah. I, I do like the as strange as it sounds and as simple as it sounds, it's quite well balanced because Going back to the basic Urukai warrior, they're with a shield, defense six, fight four, strength four. They're the space so, marines of this game. Yeah, they're the space marines. That's a very powerful punch. So we're 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 joking about like the blisses and stuff, but like truth be told, you want to get into your opponent's face as quick as possible because of the blisters. But once you get there, it's not like you're gonna melt the troops away. They're gonna put up a stiff resistance and a, a resistance with a lot of models too. So I think like as we're talking about the Legion, it's it's really, really dangerous. Yeah, it was funny when it first came out. A lot of people were like, oh, this Legion sucks. It doesn't have any heroes and it just doesn't need them. Yeah. <laughs> so because I mean, you know, the best part is the counterbalancing of 
the the demolition bombs and the fact that you feel like you want to rush in as fast as possible but then like you can't just because these bombs are walking around so it's it's a really cool little you know bouncing act of that army to kind of keep you at bay but yet not make you want to close in either it is and then being a corsair player like i think that my my favorite thing about the corsairs was a max of crossbows like these dudes are gonna have a max of crossbows too which is like it's just it's just dangerous yeah, I remember um, just to ago. just to add in, sorry, man, before you go, just to add in, there were a couple of FAQs um that also affected this legion. Um, I think the two main ones, and people can correct me if there are some other ones, but one of them was that um now your bombs have to be in range of uh of at least uh I believe it's two enemy models um to be able to yeah. blow up. Um and this does a couple of things. Um, one, it means that if there's an enemy hero just sitting out on their own, chopping through your Urukai, um, you can't blow them up because there are no other models near them. And I think maybe even more importantly, um, you can't blow up your own army anymore, which is something you used to be able to do. You'd go, you'd get on the objectives, and then you'd say, hey, I have more victory points than you because I'm on the objectives. I'm going to blow up my army. I'll lose the points for breaking sure, but I'll still be able to win the game. Um, so that certainly took a dimension out of them. And also a less, uh, less impactful nerf, I would say, is the ballistas got a measly six inch minimum range, um, which I find personally, and other people can, can correct me on this, generally doesn't apply unless you're playing in a scenario such as Maelstrom of Battle, um, where you can deploy on top of the ballistas immediately. Um, because it's just so hard to close with the ballistas when you've got a wall of Urukai in front of them. Um, yeah, so, Mick, what were you saying? No, I, I remember years ago when, um, it, was like, it must have been like 2007 or 8, um, before, before there were any warbands and limits and stuff like that. I remember back then I was playing like 27 crossbows at 700 points with like, yeah, with like, with like, I don't know. You had your gun line list. Yeah. It was like yeah. two, two, two captains with crossbows and then yeah. 25 uh, Urukai with crossbows and like 50 orcs or something like that. Something like yep. that. Was nice. was yeah. You use the orcs to bolster your crossbow numbers. I remember that list on your blog. I actually played with it a couple tournaments. I like copied it like model for model. Yeah. Basically, basically they went, oh, let's 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 recreate that but let's add ballistas to it <laughs> you know i kind of wonder if that's still possible nowadays could you because isengard has orcs right in the mm-hmm. yeah. so oh i guess you know what limits it nowadays is the warband restrictions yeah is before you only need like one hero yeah, yeah you had you had legolas in 75 elves so yeah yeah so but uh yeah no in this list i mean it functions so simply that i mean are we just discussing how it works like reviewing it like discussing why it's powerful uh, well, we're, we're gonna go we're gonna go a little more in depth um and i think let's let's t- let's shift a little bit into how to build it um because it is extremely simple um but uh let's let's use an example here um so uh alessandro uh you took this list uh, at 800 points to the etc um, do you mind just going like games? <laughs> yes, yeah, so many other players. Um, do you mind just going over the uh, the thought process behind your list um, and what you had in it, just uh, pretty briefly to to go over yeah. what's good about it? Yeah. Well, actually, it, there were just three assault opponents. The I'm steep uh, on 128 lists, something like that. Mm. What? So uh, okay. Not so a lot. Get... Many, many of them were fake lists. So they were fake, many, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Many of them were, were, was the fifth list or something. Um, so when I play above, uh, 600 points, I start, uh, multiplying 65 per six. So basically it's three captains, three ballistas, and you start like that. And then you see how many points you have left. Why it's three? Either. I'm just purely curious. Sorry to interrupt that. Like, uh, I know no, that was a big... There's like, there's yeah. like the two bombs, two ballistas yeah. versions too, and then three, three, three ballistas, one bomb. Uh, well, I, I think the, the best part of the army, the main character, is the ballista. Uh, the bomb is very good. It's very helpful sometimes, but it's basically ballistas. Because... I don't play not even one model at defense six 
all my models have defense five, but they only crossbows, pikes, and the other third are uh, the the men of the ballistas, the servants. Mm -hmm. um, basically, um, at eight hundred points, I was uh, I had forty four models. Uh, so three ballista, three captains, um, fourteen crossbows because two of the captains uh, had crossbows, while the leader has had was the only model in the list with shield, and all the rest pikes, one pike with banner. Uh, one thing very important to me is that one of the warbands uh, with the captain has only the captain and one pike because this is very helpful for, for deployment, because the, one of the most important thing is, is deployment. Of course, I had the bomb as well, 800 points. Sorry, guys. So uh, basically, I deploy four warbands before uh, I actually show my, my opponent where I deploy all of my warriors. This is very, very, it's huge, it's huge. And you, you get a lot of advantage with your opponent only only with that. And um, and this works from 600 points to, to 800 points. I tried also with four ballistas, but too many. You have too few warriors. Yeah. Mm. So, so, so like a deployment goes like what? Like ballista, then opponent, then ballista, then opponent, then ballista, then opponent, and then captain? Well, or, or, uh, or, or, or do you drop your captain first? Uh, let's say 70% of the games, I deploy all the ballistas, mm -hmm. um, and then the the captain alone, okay. and then my last two warbands. Right. Yeah, but it depends. It depends. Usually the ballistas uh, are deploying all in the same way because now with the nerf, uh, that it's not it's not huge in terms of of play style, but it's huge in terms of deployment, because before I was doing the the ballista's castle, so putting like two like this in the border with the um, servants in the middle, and you can shoot 300, uh, three, 360 degrees. So basically, uh, they they couldn't charge your your servants, and you could shoot to the models in base contact with the ballistas. But now that you have six in um, like the six inch thing, you have to deploy one in one corner, one in the other, and one in the middle, more right. or less. Yeah. So this is kind of forced. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and then so and you you're I, I, gonna yeah. be cross cr cross shooting across across the board. Yeah, so you're, through, you're, through, you're through the corners and through the middle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, shooting all day long. The nerf to the bomb is. Uh, is is tricky because as Evan was saying, it's important uh, not to explode your army. For that is is working, but in terms of uh, one hero, like you can't just go with one hero in, because if you do so, you have no scatter for the ballista. Because basically the bomb is, let's say half inch plus two inch radius, so per side. So you have to deploy. Um, like farther than four inch and a half from from one model to make it outside the bomb range. So um, is is working in order not to make you explode the army, but not in terms of leaving your hero alone, killing models. Okay. Yeah, and you can shoot in combat as well because it's civil. Yeah. So I guess so. Uh, no, go ahead, Devin. No, I just find um for the uh, to make sure I might have missed this, but like, is is it? Do you find ever since that FAQ on the bomb that now a counter that people are doing is sending one hero to go and deal with the bomb? Like, since you can't blow it up on them, yeah, it happens. Um, but you still have ballistas on that hero. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I'd assume if you just send one hero, there's nothing to like. If you scatter, him, he's yeah, nothing to scatter him. Yeah, that's true. So it's actually probably more dangerous doing that because you're right. Yeah, that just yes, that yeah. So it's always gonna hit. Like if if you yeah. if you if you just roll two hits and then you roll scatter, as long as you don't roll one, you hit. 
So then with that in mind, then did the FAQ of needing to be in range of two models, did that do anything really to affect your gameplay or just? Actually, to be honest, uh, I, I, I like played maybe 200 games with this list. So really, really, it's it's my main list. And I was I never played the bomb till after the nerf. So I have <laughs> no idea, honestly. Before I was like, do a spam of models. Because like with the bomb, you, you cut 80 points, which is eight Urukai. So uh, because you, you still have three with the bomb, but not really in the game until you make right. it explode. So... 80 Urukai are are a lot. Yeah. Last year I was playing uh, 54 models, I think, 52 or 54. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, this year 44. Well, that's so. the thing. Like even at 800 points, like 50 models is pretty big when when you consider that they're all fight four, strength four. <laughs> yeah. Like even yeah. even if the blisters are not doing anything, it's still a massive army to to actually fight through. Yeah. Yeah. The thing to to remember is that nine models are not fighting sure because they are with the ballistas but still it's it's a big army mm-hmm. so i guess um if you have like what are the lists that you just do not want to come across like with dealing with this army like i mean just i mean i guess we could say anti-shooting in general but like what do you yeah. what do you dread the most i i hate two list two list mm-hmm. so one is assault on lothlorien Yes. <laughs> and uh, no, well, the other, it's is I never see it, never see it. But it was the list I was playing earlier, so it's it's uh, Iron Hills with Dane, one captain, mm-hmm. and two ballistas. Oh uh, yeah, because they <laughs> and, and you you don't want it, you really don't want it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's not even but, a list uh, I would think would work. Two ballistas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But apart from that, the thing I, I love about the list is that you can play basically every matchup. You can try to play every matchup. You yeah. can you can be in advance or not, but you can still play. You you have a chance. You okay. Have a chance. Just I simply because you have essentially three shots and re-roll yeah. attempt even against blinding light it yeah it's no it's against blinding light i think it's bad if, if they do the, the ball across the uh, oh like, yeah because you're blinding light, right through <laughs> it's it's better it's better yeah then well, that's the thing like, the blinding light doesn't read too much because like as long as as soon as you hit the ball like yeah you, you have the re-roll you part. have the might yeah yeah that's true so you do if you if you think about it in in math term Basically, you hit two, more or less, you hit two times a turn for like at least the first two turns, which is already devastating, already devastating. Yeah. All right. So that's actually counterintuitive to fight this list. Actually, you're already saying like, hey, do not cluster up like yeah. Yeah. into the blinding light range. Like you'll see most players will do that. I imagine even the expert players who just really aren't thinking about that math. So, so yeah. you would probably want to that's... like have your heroes close to blinding light, but not in a way that anything else can be hit or they like yeah, exactly. they can fly somewhere else, but then but then have all your warriors <laughs> outside of blinding light. So then yeah. you're you're basically asking the ballista player to shoot at something else. Yeah, just scatter them around so that yeah. way you're not getting massive casualties. Yeah. If you deploy two warriors, like two, 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 divided by half inch, one inch. So mm-hmm. you get only worst case scenario, you get two warriors. Best case scenario, you get only one, mm-hmm. and you, you might not even kill it because it's still three plus. Yeah. So yeah. I think that that's the best way to play against them. Yeah, and it almost feels it feels counterintuitive because uh, when you split up um, and try to avoid the ballistas, that's when the crossbows are able to. Uh, to pick you off pretty easily because you're not in that tight shield wall formation you can get into the spears so it's very very tough to deal with um i was actually interested alessandro um in uh what you think your most difficult game uh, at the etc was um and how you sort of tried to play around that because i know this list can have some very um almost seemingly impossible matchups so I think uh, the worst matchup was the last one against Poland 1. 
we were uh, like last game, table one, and against Potemp. I don't know if you know him, but it's he's a fantastic player, fantastic player, and he was playing as Sultan of Florian, and the scenario was contest of champions. Oh, oh that dude, that's yeah. a nasty match. Yeah. That's <laughs> terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> and I, I, it was one of the best game I've ever had, and so basically. Um, I tried to uh, tell it fast, so I deployed to leave only the space for an infantry model with the leader, uh, like in just behind. Uh, so this way, he couldn't charge me with any beast, uh, like uh, enraged, and um, he couldn't charge me as well if. He, he would have had a successful uh, transfix because I had the pike support with uh, control zone, so he couldn't come in and he couldn't charge the pikes. Okay. Mm. Um, so my thing was okay, if I resist to the transfix, he had two with seven wheels, so not, not very yeah. yet. Um, he can charge me, otherwise, he can't. And uh, basically, started like this. Uh, I survived a couple of turns and um, I managed to have one turn with where I resist because he, he was throwing a lot of sixes. Uh, so I decided not to use my will point to, to, to resist. Um, so when he had only uh, like two, two or three will remainings with, with these uh, uh, mages, I decided to try to resist that turn. So I rolled a natural six with my will. That was huge. So I succeeded to fight that turn and I killed two models and I charged his leader and I wound him. Uh, in the meantime, my army was getting destroyed completely. Like, <laughs> so was his leader, um, was it Druzhag or Musgur? No, unfortunately, it was Musgur. <laughs> unfortunately, it was Musgur. Um, so he killed. He killed one model with Mutsgur, um, but um, I succeeded to to keep like a, a bubble around my leader, so he couldn't trap me in with the with the bats. Um, I also um, successfully exploded the bomb on his uh, one sp two spiders and one bat, killing all of them. Oof. Yeah, and that okay. was huge as well. So basically, what ended up was uh, I finished uh, with like four models in the in the field, uh, uh, like with my leader um, above them, and I won the last priority, so I could move uh, earlier than him. So I run away from from Mutsgur, and and basically I had double of of his uh, kills, mm -hmm. and and but I was broken and I wounded. His leader with my leader, so I won six one that mm -hmm. game. That wasn't a major victory because uh, at the ATC you had to score at least uh, you, you had to have at least six victory points difference to, okay. to score. So a not major just win. double. Yeah, okay. yeah, not just double. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that was very nice game. Very nice game. That's a hell of a showing. The fact that I mean that matchup, right? I actually thought you were going to tell me you lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was terrible. I actually, to be honest, uh, I got some luck in very important moment, especially mm -hmm. the 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 six, the natural six for resisting to that immobilize. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, like there are some matchups where where you need a good rolls, otherwise yeah. you, you don't win. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what were the blizzards doing all, all all this time? Did you did they actually? Do uh, well, actually, yes. Um, they prevented uh, Musgur um, uh, for fighting uh, for at least two turns. So you kept firing into his combats to knock him down. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, I wounded once, um, but he saved the fate. So yeah, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> so that's it, basically. They they kill someone, but um, in the center of the game where my leader was there, I didn't want to shoot there mm -hmm. because the risk of killing my leader was too high. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just decided to to shoot randomly somewhere else. But 
not very important. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in the end, you guys, uh, Italy, you guys finished second and Poland finished third? Yes. Yes, nice. that was Congrats. a big scream, big scream at the end, <laughs> because we were all at the same uh, tournament points. Yeah, it was like 97 points for three 97 teams. points, yes. And that's like yes. the, the incredible thing is that like between um, between six rounds of four players, you can you can score anywhere between 0 and 24 points per round per team. So it's 144 yeah. points that any team can score. And three of the teams were were tied at ninety seven. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. That's insane. Yeah. yeah, 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 that was crazy. And yeah, we we were very happy for Italy in general because it's it's a very big result. Like uh, we were feeling like the level, medium level was growing a lot, but you know until you you get um, like a trophy like this, you, you don't really. Are, you can't be sure, no? Yeah. But but yeah, it was nice. It was nice. We were then playing for it. Actually, Poland was uh, a bit unlucky, uh, but they, they were amazing player or or Poland player. Amazing. Yeah. So do you think that also in, in the ETC, are they allowed to like target you with a player where they think their list is just absolutely superior to yours. So like the other team can match you up like purposely in contests of champions with assault Malthorian. Mm -hmm. Like, are they able to do that or not really? Well, um, no, I, I don't think so. Oh, okay. So how, how do, how's it, how do you do the pairings when you have team versus team? It's, uh, it depends a lot on what you oh, get. Okay. Basically we, we, we do this, this thing. We say, we can avoid. We can make one of our player avoids one of theirs. Okay, so mm -hmm. the thing is, um, which player is, is going to suffer a lot? So we pick him, and we say, okay, so you're going to avoid that that list. We knew for sure they they would have uh, cut uh, the emperor from me because it's basically free win. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we we did, like I think last pairing was our best pairing because we were terrible at contest champions, really terrible. We had Galadriel, normal Galadriel, not yeah. not uh, Galadriel <laughs> not <like> lady, <laughs> and and then we have um, the Shadow Lord on foot, my <laughs> uh, Yurkai captain, and the last one was. Uh, Oh yeah, it was assault on Athlorian, so it was. So, yeah, that was not so. <laughs> yeah. So when they put assault on Athlorian against you, it wasn't even just trying to, like they sacrificed no. you. It was like you all were having a bad yeah. day. Yeah, <laughs> we, we were all terrible. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So there's yeah. there's one scenario out of the eighteen, and all of you got it at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible, terrible. Also, but you know, also last ATC we had contest of champions, um, first game against Balrog. Uh, Aragorn, uh, something like that. You're like, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, of all the scenarios in the game with Helm's Deep, this Salt Helm's Deep Legion, what are like kind of the two that you just that that cripple it more than most? I'm I'm curious if there's an unexpected surprise in there. Mm, well, the thing is, the thing is, if you if there is like a fairly full board the thing is you can force mm -hmm. the draw you can you can force the draw okay mm -hmm. um many players don't do it i think when you're reaching like high level competitive games you should do it more because it's you force me to come if if i come I'm I, I I can't shoot. It's it's much harder. So this is the the strategy I fear the most because it's I I finish like all games for conditions. No games ends with the with the roll off or uh, or for time. So if if you force me to to come over and you have a solid forty models and you play across the Shenic elements, it's very complicated for me. About a scenario, I think. Well, I think. 
I can't say Clash by Moonlight because it's just too good. You have 14 crossbows with, with plus one to wound. You have ballistas with plus one to wound. Um, I don't know, probably Maestrom now. Maestrom. Yeah, sure, and is that but because they good. can hop on your ballista so easily? Yeah, but not really, because still, you, you get two in, in the borders, one in the center. You shoot the first turn. They can't charge you the first turn. So you, you do massive damage, massive damage the first turn. And if you come after with the bomb, you can you can make the bomb explode the first turn. Hmm. Oh, yeah. So, That's right. Yeah. So... Uh, it happens like at GTs. It happens. Uh, we had like a commanded battlefield against White Council. I came up second, and uh, and Gandalf and Saruman. Adios. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's tricky. I I can't say. I think I think contest of champions is the, is the worst so far. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so what about ones where you got to chase the opponent all over the place like heirlooms? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. But still, yeah, maybe heirlooms as well. But you have a lot of a lot of weapons. Mm, yeah. But also, there is one army that usually you you hard to lose against it, which is Goblin Town. Goblin you're Town. Saying it's hard to w beat Goblin Town, or it's, yes, that's hard to beat. Okay, it's hard to beat Goblin Town. Yeah. In, in, I, I always ask that question because I'm always surprised. Like you know, I know a level a lot of really top level Goblin Town players. They always say that oh lords of battle is really not that big a deal and they're not afraid of it um and it, it, it with goblin town keep in mind and i'm just like so it's like so counterintuitive to hear that now everybody's like yourself you've played like 200 games of these i'm like well i'm curious like what are the scenarios yeah. that hurt you and, and once again like clash by moonlight you would think like okay i could rationalize hey you're you're not able to fire at a distance anymore the whole place is an assault of lothoria yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, but fourteen yeah, crossbows with with plus, with plus one to to kill, it's devastating. Yeah. yeah, I guess assault law Florian for anyone not understanding, like because they have the darkness rule, <laughs> the exact same thing as the moonlight. the The difference though is that they have cave dweller. Yeah. So of course they're not getting the plus one of it. So you yeah. you know. Yeah. Also, the other very difficult scenarios, like the worst pool for me, in general, is the um, objective scenario. Because. It's like domination, or... yes, terrible mm -hmm. domination, uh, capture and control, and um, breakthrough. breakthrough. I think, yeah. Uh, so, terrible. when you're dealing with those, do you just try to maybe break the opposing army first before going around and scattering for objectives? It depends, it's, it's very yeah. important to choose uh, the timing well because if you, mm -hmm. if you fight too early, you just lose. And if you fight too late, you won't get objectives. Mm -hmm. So this is the tricky part. But uh, with with a lot of experience, you you manage to to find it. Because the thing is, uh, like you were saying, the 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 difficult part is to choose when to break the opponent, which is still it gives you a big advantage, you no, know, in terms of victory points as well. But in those scenarios, for, for example, domination, if you lose the roll off, I always try to um, to have three objectives in one side. Yeah. I, I, I don't like to, to do two, one, two. I prefer three, three, one, one, and try to win. If I win the roll off, all good. If I lose it, <laughs> not game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's taking a chance, but I mean, you know, it's worth it if you, yeah, if you get yeah, that correct yeah, 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 like yeah. roll. So, okay. So then those are the scenarios in the armies. Uh, so for those of you who hate Assault and Helm's Deep, just bring that to a tournament. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Bring, uh, just bring Assault and the Florian and hope you play Breakthrough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Either that or a random Iron Hills army with two ballistas. <laughs> yeah. <that's>... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lose to everything else, but win against that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, basically, yeah. Round, round one, spoil Alessandro's tournament, and then lose to everything else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you can say you beat an ETC winner. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so. Um, well, I think uh, unless anyone else has anything more to say about, you know, how to play them in their strengths, let's move on uh, a little bit into uh, how to beat them. Um, because for a lot of players, it's obviously uh, very challenging to do that. Um, they're a very powerful army. 
Um, and I think uh, I just want to touch back on um, what Alessandro was talking about a bit earlier, um, which is the force draw, which is uh, something I actually um, I actually theory crafted a lot um, when I was taking Angmar um, to the uh, to Articon, because obviously that matchup is uh, is utterly atrocious. Um, because uh, if in case you didn't know, when you take Gulivar and Angmar, uh, he gets just touched with a siege engine and he instantly dies. Um, so it was just so so bad. Um, and one of the uh, one of the things I I worked on figuring out was was how to force a draw in scenarios like to the death, um, where I obviously couldn't try and engage them. Um, and thankfully, I never had to to try that in uh, that particular scenario. Um, but if you just feel like um you're not able to to get in on them um and uh you're still able to be in contention uh, for the tournament if you draw i would definitely uh maybe it doesn't make for the most interesting game but i think it's even less interesting for you uh when your army is getting blown off the table by uh crossbows and ballistas so it's it's definitely something to keep in mind mm. um so so just in general um what are people's opinions on uh, how to beat this list? Um, what what strategies can you use to get the upper hand? Uh, um, those sorts of I'm things. I'm actually wondering. So, Alessandro, out of the six games that you played at the ATC, how many of those did you lose with your assault on zero? Zero. zero. Did you win nice. all six? I won six. Yes. Okay. So. Um, I, I, okay. Yeah. So then, yeah, it's impossible. But it is I, impossible. I think. <laughs> I think yeah, not not only uh, because of the list, mm -hmm. not only because uh, of the good matchups. I, I think sometimes, um, at least three times, I decided like in in the team for, when with the pairings, we decided I would have taken the the best matchup and maybe another because I was I was saying okay if I get this matchup I win for sure. Um, so. <clears throat> It differs from from a single tournament. Yeah, there is there is that thing with ATC. Uh, you know, it differs. Like, because I remember when 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 we were playing a few years ago, like we always had Ed Ball with the Felbies, and was like, yeah. if like his specific army was just so specific where we could just go, who do you want to kill? And yeah. then and then he go this person, and then like he just he just wins his game because 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 <laughs> the matchup can can work that way. So yeah. it's similar here. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um. Yes. I don't remember what what I was about to say. So. Okay. Yeah. No. So. <laughs> so. So. In a way, the etc. That in, it isn't necessarily, um, the tournament at which, like, which which represents other tournaments. So. Yeah. In terms I of think... normal tournaments, where you're playing against against anything, what like what's the what's the thing that goes after you and beats you? I think it needs a nerf. To be honest, I think it needs a nerf. I think the list is is too good in situations where it shouldn't be. Um, where should it not be good? When you're forced to fight in close combat. I mean, uh, I'm I'm not a fan of the thing that evil evil can shoot in combat and good can't shoot in combat. Yeah. I think if you cut it from from this list. It's it's probably becoming um, not good at all, but we, for example, you say twelve inch uh, minimum range with ballistas and you're fine. Like the list is totally fine. Okay, so basically just closing quickly. But what about yeah. the fact that you would probably have your army just move outside of the twelve inch bubble to block? Um, twelve inch is huge. I mean, twelve it twelve is, inch. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's better. I mean, it's still it would still remain a very good list. The other thing it's it would be the nine ninety degrees radius for shooting instead of three hundred sixty. Which is hard to enforce in a game without mm -hmm. templates. Mm -hmm. so. What? Well, yeah. well, to be fair, the chariots have templates. Yeah. Clearly, it's true. it exists. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean that I, I think they would be two good nerves for the list. It would still be good, playable, but like this, it's it's too good, I think. Like assault on Lotlorian, eh? I mean, I, I think there are, they are two lists that needs 
a nerf. So when we say too good, do you actually imply like it's a broken army that's yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Honestly, I, I think I think now there are three broken army. Uh Assault the Lothlorian, Assault on Elm's Deep, and also the Dragon Emperor. I think they are just too good compared to the others, which is a pity uh because like the the game is very balanced. So I think these three lists are just too strong at the moment. Mm -hmm. So there's there's okay. two options for that. One is to nerf all of them, or the other option is to make everything else so broken. Yeah. Broken. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> <everything> yeah. Broken. <laughs> send yeah. in the send in the next supplement with more broken legendary legions, yeah. and then it will be fixed. <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> so yeah. is there um, any uh, out of pure curiosity, like besides the Iron Hills army, is there any that can actually go into a shooting war with you and win consistently? Well, 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 it depends. If if there are like a lot of woods and like uh, placings to, to hide behind, like uh, Mirkwood Rangers mm -hmm. can yeah, say okay. something. Yeah. Okay. Or I don't know, a double, double uh, cat murder catapult with the Shadow <laughs> Lord. I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. But so that I think uh, Poland one actually took a, a very interesting list. Um, oh yeah, with yeah, you're Gandalf right. Gandalf and the Avenger Bolthors and the Trebuchet, and I think we we theorized that part of that was to try and beat that legendary legion. Do you think it actually outshoots them? No. <laughs> no. 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 No way. No way. Not even close. Not even close. Why is that? Is it because you got three long range weapons and they have you, one? You have three rerolls. Three rerolls, even if at six, it's and and fourteen crossbows. It's he, he was he was he had like one trabuchet, and the trabuchet does nothing to the ballistas. Basically, you deploy the servants like farther than two inches one from each other. So if you, if you hit the ballista, you do one wound because mm -hmm. it's siege targets. If you hit one servant, okay, good for you. You kill it at three plus, and still I have three three ballistas. No, it's no, no way. So it just cannot. Yeah, the counter battery no. fire is not going to do anything, which is kind of unfortunate. The, the trebuchet and the catapult probably should have a rule against siege targets that deal extra damage. You and just actually, kill it. Yeah, just destroy it outright. Yeah, 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 yeah it's I a giant do, rock. But isn't it like additional 30 points or something like that for the trebuchet? The wall uh, breaker or something? No, I don't think they have. They, they have a thing that. that they can reroll against siege targets. Yeah. They can reroll for wounding, but... It doesn't really matter. Which doesn't matter. really matter. Yeah, it's you're dealing one wound. Yeah. And so, yeah, they, they, they most likely should make the ballista, or those things at least say, like, it still auto-kills siege targets. Because, I mean, it's a legacy rule from back in the day where you had doors and walls and all that, yeah. but we don't have any of that anymore, so... Yeah, and some massive rock falling onto a piece of wood surely will break it. Yeah, it's going to destroy it. Like, if yeah. that trebuchet actually hit that thing in real life, it's done. <laughs> like, yeah. It would be literally three turns and all three ballistas would be gone. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And the bad part is that there are some matchups that it's, it's just like free win. It's, yeah. it's just a free win. So, what are your free win matchups? We talk about Angmar. Angmar, I love it. I love Angmar. Oh, yeah. I love Gulamar. Can't wait. Oh, I was I was so glad you were playing the Bears that tournament instead oh, yeah, of that. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I trolled so hard. I trolled so hard that that tournament. My God, yeah. <laughs> and also, for example, Gorgoroth Beast, because there is this rule that if you if you scatter from a Gorgoroth Beast uh, model on the Oda, you you hit the beast for sure. So this is the rule. So and the beast like got killed in one shot. So yeah, of Fantastic. course. Fantastic. Yeah, that the Gorgoroth War Beast is like it has too many such like crippling weaknesses. <laughs> it's just, oh yeah. So uh, yeah. But um all right. So I guess um the bears, you fought the bears. I mean, against a target like that, is that an easy win? Like to just shoot the bears on? You don't you don't shoot the bears, you shoot the armies. You shoot the army, okay. Yeah, it's because yeah, the army's so small. Them. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The, the bears have the the five up save and the fate rolls, so I and, I probably think it probably won't be worth it. And and they also you yeah you wounded at four plus and also they uh, they won't get prone, nor mm. uh, sh no shoot away because like 
above six um, strength six, you you just don't shoot them. Really? Even, even uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Is that for all siege weapons? Uh, no, for uh, this kind of ballistas, uh, the dwarf, the Kazadum, the uh, Isengard, and uh, the Mordor. Oh yeah, 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 because it's like the, the mm. they're like the special special type of. Shot. So so if you if you hit a fell beast, say, and then you roll a one, that means mm -hmm. it still stays up. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, probably not super useful because the fell beast is probably going to die anyways, but. It's a thought that counts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, it's because before it wasn't like that. Now it's better than before, let's say. Not the best, but still. For example, Guire is, is very annoying. Yeah. Mm. yeah. How do you kill that? Yeah, yeah, that, that would actually be. So, okay, so then that's how you beat that kind of list. Say fast, strength six plus monster, <laughs> like Guire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean you can. You still can do it. Uh, yeah. Making a lot of in the way, a um, lot of in the way test, um, approaching the army fast. Uh, it's possible, uh, but yeah. I think it's just too too strong at the moment. Yeah, not, yeah. No, but I mean you know when we when we talk about armies that can be yours. I mean obviously no matter what you bring, even if you bring a hard counter, you're still going to need a tremendous amount of skill to be a skilled. Assault in the Helm's Deep player. Like, I mean, it's, you know, that none of these are surefire ways to to win. Um, I don't know. Maybe Smaug is a surefire way to win. What, what about him? Smaug. <laughs> Smaug is a troll list. You can fight <laughs> game one, but <laughs> not game two. <laughs> so it's good for me. Yeah. Oh, that's that sounds <laughs> awful. I'm just imagining sending one Urukai into Smaug and then taking your crossbows and just shooting <laughs> firing out every single time. time. <laughs> Smaug is probably a terrible match. <laughs> oh, you you lose contest of champions with Smaug because you just get tabled and then you you'd win. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to to share a bit of uh, of my experience against the list. Um, because I played it <laughs> three times at Articon. Oh, yeah, um, that happened. <laughs> With <Angra. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I actually, yeah, I I won two and I drew one. So uh, I I still don't know how I managed that. Um, but there were a couple tricks that I that I picked up from it. Um, two of the matchups were uh, I think uh, there was domination and um command the battlefield. So they all in all were comparatively pretty good. Um for me against assault upon Helm's Deep. Um Command the Battlefield was was at the Masters uh table two of the final round. So I wasn't super happy about playing them last round, but uh, uh at least in that scenario I was able to yeah, basically what uh Alessandro said was just um deploy your entire army as close to the ballistas as humanly possible. Um and just try and take them out as quickly as possible. Because as I learned from that game, um, even when like you're almost on top of the ballista, it can still shoot at something that isn't six inches away. So you have to be super, super careful around that. Um, and my opponent actually chose not to take the bomb um, at that points level. Um, so after I took out the uh, the big crossbows, Gulivar was actually able to basically clean up that game. Um, and, uh, in domination, it was, it was definitely interesting because, uh, I think he broke me, um, or was very close to it because I mean, obviously that's going to happen with Angmar. Um, Gulivar survived again. I think I got him in, uh, on turn two and he was lucky enough not to, I was lucky enough not to have him killed turn one. Um, and then, uh, he was able to survive the entire game because, uh, yet again, I don't think there was a bomb in that list. Um, so, uh, being able to, uh, to use the monster that was theoretically supposed to just automatically die in those scenarios was very useful. Um, I also like similar to what Alessandro said, I, uh, despite it being painful to do, I spread out my, uh, my models mm -hmm. um, in order to not get absolutely destroyed by the ballistas and sure the crossbows did damage. Um, but at least it was less than the ballistas did. Um, I also found that uh, marching against the list can also um, be a trap sometimes. 
um, because March, just like blinding light, is a six inch bubble, right? So if you mm. bubble all of your models together to get in range of the March, then you're going to get absolutely destroyed by the ballistas. Um, and I'm actually interested um, in your thoughts, uh, Alessandro. Um, do you think um, the opponent having maybe two marches um, is uh, is more effective against the list because you can you can spread your army out more while still being able to get those three inches? How how much does that help? Well, um, the first march is always good because you still can have a bubble and move nine and spread the army after. But at least like the models you, you want to have in the fir first line, they, they can go ahead. Uh, yeah, two marches are good. Um, yeah, you, you want to, to come as close as possible, at, as fast as possible. Not yeah. not giving um, many, many shoots with, to the ballista. So. so just to clarify, you're saying that you, if you had the option to march, but you had to stay in a bubble because you have only one guy who can march or split up and move six inches and not be in a bubble. You're saying it's yeah. better to be in the bubble. No, no, no. Sorry. I'm I'm saying when you deploy, you deploy in a sort of bubble, okay, all together. So you march the first turn, and during the march, you spread the army. Don't they have to stay within six? They have, they have to stay within six. You're oh, talking yeah, about you're a right. war drum. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking drum. about the war drum. Yeah. Drum, yeah. Um, or at least you can leave them even, even with the march, but still you can you have 12 inch uh, diameter so basically you you can still split them a lot mm. i guess More it than... depends on how how big your army is right say if you yeah. have like a 60 model army then yeah but um, it's much harder yeah but even even marches for for a few models it's worth it because once mm. you you get with the opponent army within the ways with the ballistas that's the goal i mean the goal is to come as close as the urukai as possible so that the ballistas have their own model in the way. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so what you're saying is call the march, right? But don't yeah. clump up all of your models together yeah. Um, yeah. in order to get them all in range. Yeah. All right. You can still yeah. move some of them out of the march if you need to. Um, but the most important models that want to go forward, they should. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, right. And just sort of maybe to, to, to wrap this up a little bit, um uh just sort of talking about my my final game that I played against them um which was uh in reconnoiter uh with angmar um and uh I I I have to admit it it was uh definitely one of the most hellish games I've ever played because uh you know at any point uh, my gulivar could just uh disappear from the board um but I think it's definitely a uh it it shows you that uh you know, even if you're playing against a list like this, sometimes the ballistas just won't necessarily roll super well. Um, I mean, his ballistas were rolling well enough, right? But uh, he wasn't able to to secure the kill on Gulivar, and um, I sort of saw my out when he put we pushed guys a little too far forward up the board, and I managed to charge Gulivar into a model and heroic combat off of that model to get within 12 inches of the back board edge. And then I called heroic move and ran off the <laughs> board edge. And that was actually how I was able to, to draw that game. Um, I almost won, but he, he ended up breaking me. Um, but it just shows that, you know, even if you feel like you're going to get absolutely destroyed by this list and shot to pieces, you know, try to see your outs. If maybe, uh, maybe they're sitting at the back of the board in domination, make sure to take those objectives. Um, what I did was uh, I basically took my models and hid them behind terrain pieces, laid them down. And then on the last turn of the game in uh, in my game of domination, I ran the mountain range of the objectives so they couldn't shoot at them before, but then I could also get them um, in range. And just, I think it with this army, focusing more on your victory conditions instead of just running, running forward and beating it, um, is probably necessary because just just trying to run at them and win that way uh especially with something like angmar is uh ridiculously difficult um yeah so so final thoughts i know mick you've played against them maybe once or twice um i know you played against assault on law florian oh yeah um, yeah 
and, and I'm actually like in the middle of building a solar Florian. So this is this is all good news to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so basically, what we're saying is, uh, in order to counter them, uh, play assault on Lothlorien. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then you win. Oh no, I'm going the double Iron Hill Ballista route. Yeah. No, double catapult. <laughs> I think. Yeah. That sounds like my day. But yeah, no. All right. Well then, I guess as a final thought, since we're pretty much closing this out, it's uh, we we didn't mention recon. I mean, is recon a scenario that? Recon just, is probably the best scenario you can get for for assault, God. like yes. for assault to win. <laughs> yes. It's oh, free wow. win. So? It's oh, free win. There, it's impossible. I hit. I, I don't know how I drew that. It's so so yeah. incredibly I, awful I, because I, they're going to get so seven. Far. They're going to get seven to eight shots on you, like minimum. Um, because what is it, forty eight inches, and then yeah, it's just insane how many times they're going to be able to shoot at you and just obliterate your army before they get in you don't even need to run any models off the board but i mean you can if you want um but just being able to just completely obliterate the opponent so is that the strategy you take us under yeah th there are like basically you know, two scenarios where you move forward uh every time which are destroy the supplies and uh reconnoiter reconnoiter basically like the difficult matchups, as Evan was saying, is when your opponent hides behind something. But usually, um, unless like he's very lucky, but he can hide in a corner, okay, or on a side of the board. So you just march straight forward with, let's say, three quarter of your warriors on the opposite side. You have six might for marches, so a lot. And you just march that way and you you go off the board. If if you try to come your way, you have still few models to resist and you can shoot at him because he would go on open ground. And otherwise you just go out with, with some models. So it's it's a very, very good scenario. Very good scenario. Hmm. So that's good to know because that's another counterintuitive one where you'd think like, oh, now you have to move toward me finally. But it's like, yeah. no, no <laughs> like no, you're cool. No. <laughs> yeah. And also the soil supplies is the same. Basically, you leave the two captains, not the leader, on, on the two sides of the board. And mm -hmm. you just wait for him to do something. If he doesn't do anything, you just move forward just a bit, just a bit. And then you march and he, he has to choose or he loses one supply. And so he loses the game. Hmm. Yeah. No, nice. that's actually, um, that's actually um, how my opponents, because I've played against them in reckon order twice um and i won once and i drew once um and that's basically how they failed to to lose the game is they didn't push their models forward um they played uh they played very passively um and they said well i've got the better shooting so i'm going to sit at the back of the mm -hmm. board and make you come to me um but that forfeited them basically getting all all of their victory points for getting models off the board um, so despite my army getting absolutely demolished both times, um, I was able to get models off the board and then either win and draw that way. So I think even though you've got this heavy shooting army, if you're playing this list, you need to uh, you need to know when to when to move forward and when to commit and grab the objectives. Yeah, it's the most difficult part, but it's also the most important. Also, many times it happens. Uh, when you deploy, you still deploy your first warbands and the whole army of your opponent is deployed. Mm -hmm. And it happens when they deploy in the center of the board. It happened to me a lot that I deployed, like they, they, they will spread their army to try to, to come to me. And I was deploying like all my army in the front of one of his warbands completely alone. And still you have like your your leader is a killing machine. Three attacks, three wounds, strength five, defense seven is massive. Mm -hmm. And you have other two Urukai captains and still 30 Urukai that like fights, fight a lot. And yeah. and you have the pikes behind your leader, so you're really like yeah, five yeah, dice yeah. to win combat. Yeah, and banner and yeah. everything. Yeah. 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 Six six dice win combat. Yeah. Not bad. Well, okay. So six wins at the ETC or WTC that, that it's now called. Um, congrats on your on your podium finish. 
Jeez. Yeah, it's been yeah. it's been it's been really insightful because um, you you rarely hear so many interesting thoughts from someone who's so experienced with it with with, with an army. So yeah, it's 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 really good to see both pros and cons of how we can win with it or against it. Thank you. But still, I think the most important thing is really, I think it, it needs a nerf. All right. One final thing thing to pick your brain with, Alessandro. Um, you listed what you thought were the three most broken armies. Um, and I think we all agree with you that it's the uh, the Dragon Emperor, the Assault upon Helm's Deep, That's and the Mark. Assault on Lothlorien. Uh, Good. Mark, sure. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, if you had to rank them, um, which do you think is uh, first, second, and third? How would you rank them? Honestly, I think Assault on Elm's Deep, too good. Really? Even more than the Assault on Lothlorien, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Assault on Lothlorien, I, I think it loses against um, like a warrior-based army. Many, many of them. Uh, throwing spears, uh, um, Erebor dwarves, uh, also like a uh, fifty models, Minas Tirith models. I don't know. They 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 have really bad matchups. I think um, even even if the list can play, but very tough. Uh, also the Dragon Emperor as well. Like Dragon Emperor against uh, ballistas, it's basically impossible. But also against uh, other other list is is not a good matchup. But I, I think Assault on Elm's Deep is, is broken at the moment. I don't know, man. You got to start playing those other armies 200 times and then get back to us. So. <laughs> yeah. There's no change your mind. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have like 100, 199 games of with Assault on Elm's to catch up now. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll let you know how it's going. In yeah, you you think the same or you think it's, uh, it's different? Like the comparing of... Um, I, I've never gone against an opponent quite as experienced as you with that particular list with Helm's Deep. So the only opponents I fought with the Helm's Deep list, um, I beat them. But like I said, it's you know I, I think I think the experience level is just not comparable. Uh, you know, I didn't go to the WTC and fight against them. So yeah. <laughs> next year, I, I think I think as as a it's it's interesting, right? Because I think uh, the the assault on Lothlorien, a lot of people find easier to play and do well with because the assault upon Helm's Deep has a lot of scenarios where you just need to absolutely know how to play it in order to win those scenarios, which a lot of people don't really know. But assault on Lothlorien, and we saw this a lot at Nova. Um, it's easier there to were. Pick up. Yeah, it's way easier to pick up. It's, I'd say, quite easy to play. Um, not to, you know, take away from the really good players who are just playing it and being successful. Um, but uh, a lot of people uh, took that to Nova and, you know, comparing their previous results at Nova to uh, how they did at Nova with the uh, the yes. assault on Lothlorien. Um, it definitely felt to me like I would rank that as the strongest list. But I've also never played against someone who is uh, who is as good at uh, assault on Helm's Deep as uh, Alessandro is. Um, so I think it would be interesting to uh, to play against Alessandro's assault upon Helm's Deep sometime um, and uh, see how much he crushes me by. I mean, um, <laughs> you also have to keep honest, Alessandro. I mean, for anyone listening to this, is uh, his target selection, like just the fact that he wouldn't fire into his own near his own combats and contest a champion, or like what he's specifically targeting with these ballistas. That's a very easy mistake for anyone not experienced mm -hmm. with this army to select the wrong targets, and and even just some of the strategies he uses to get himself out of situations like maelstrom or you know needing to knock down models or whatever. So, I think that the Helm's Deep list. Is is a, takes a little more practice to break it than like the assault in Lothlorien one, which is essentially what Evan said. But that's kind of me just articulating why, um, you know. And I think it's very if you don't mitigate threats quickly enough, I think you know 
without you having any models like if someone actually gets to those ballistas somehow i know like if they do <laughs> and actually destroys them you probably prevent that at all costs very strategically but there are probably a lot of new players who would fail to do that mm -hmm. so, like i don't think you also would have allowed gulavar to get off the board without any ability to move your own models off no my, way yeah no so way. my my <laughs> opponents did uh uh you know i i hate to be uh to 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 poo poo on my opponents but um i definitely felt like a lot of those uh wins or draws i was getting was um it felt like it was a bit of because there was a skill gap um and less so uh less so because i i actually knew entirely how to how to outplay the army with my army so that that's just i just that's why i really want to capitalize on those like you know you are very skilled with the army i think in the hands of most players Assault and Lothlorien will probably be more dangerous, but only with most players. Keep in mind, getting certainly 200 games is, you know, I most players probably games, you might be a few less. <laughs> oh, if you around, like... Let's say around, around. Most players probably get maybe 20 games, you know, in, in, a, in a good half year, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, so, so that's where I would say, yeah, I got to agree with Evan that. You know, La Salt and Lothorian to me is a more it's scary more list. Yeah, well, that's, but that's, that's but further if you if you practice the emperor, that. that's even further for the emperor because like like even with 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 the Easterlings, even if you're making every mistake in the book, you're still defense six. People are still bouncing off you. Like it's far more forgiving because uh, even yeah. with Lothorian, like if you if you if you make a big mistake, then you're only defense four with minus one two in combats and your your army falls over. So we have numbers theoretically to yeah, but, but but in that case, I would say for an average player, probably the the most like you would rank it as Emperor, then Lothlorien, then Helm's Deep. But if you're really experienced, then you might rank Helm's Deep, then Lothlorien, then, then Emperor. You know? Yeah, it's because Helm's Deep it, it, it has a higher top ceiling. It has a you know yeah. when you hit it, it's so much more powerful. You know, yeah. but it it depends. Yeah, for sure. Because I think for the for the uh, I think you're right for the average player. I think uh, Easterlings is the best just because uh, it's the easiest to play. It's the most forgiving. Um, I'd say for the top level though, and I think and unless anyone disagrees i think of the three the easterlings are probably the least strongest at least i would say um like they feel they're obviously an extremely uh strong army um but they feel almost fair i guess at least to me comparing them to the other two lists because yeah. while the easterlings are very good they're much more well well rounded mm -hmm. um compared to the other two lists which the other two lists basically do everything, um, everything well, or just so so extremely good at one thing that they can blow you off the table. And Easterlings are kind of just that, um, you know, the the sort of bog standard shield wall list. But I think they're definitely the best of those shield wall lists. Like, you know, Minas Tirith and those other lists, they can't really compare. Well, um, we oh good, yeah. Just one fast thing. I I think uh, host of the Dragon Emperor um, loses a lot, um, like with the growing of of points, because you have a, a very big spike. I think around six hundred, six hundred and a half, because you have a lot of free points with Dragon Emperor and um, Black Dragon Warriors, but. Uh, that is the the points you those are the points you can get no more so uh, i think after 700 points it loses something because because the bonus is that one uh, you get basically 60 70 points for free in the army which is very big at at lower points level but at higher points level it's mm -hmm. it's less mm -hmm. i agree with that yeah, and that with, that's, that's with interesting. Assault, you can just go to seven thousand points, and all you do is just yeah. add more ballistas. <laughs> Fifty <laughs> ballistas. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, for all I those. Mean, so. Yeah, I think obviously we shouldn't discuss this too much because this is an assault upon Helm's Deep video, um, but uh, it's it's interesting uh, because actually Dad, who's played Easterlings just an absolute ton, uh, he actually likes them better. 
at around 700, 800 points um, because he likes Rutabi in there. Um, and it's very hard to fit in both a lot of models and Rutabi into 600, 650 points. Um, and we've actually, uh, we've debated this a lot. He likes to put in Rutabi at 650 and get like 32, 33 models. And I like to put in an Easterling captain and get like 40 models. Um, so uh, Alessandro, to, to settle this debate, which one do you think is better? Which would you take? Um. I, I like most your list. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, you that, that makes control. me feel better then. Yeah. yeah. You have the world drum as well. You have complete control of the board. Uh, I mean, mm. Rutabi is great. It's fantastic. I played, actually, I played Rutabi without the Dragon Emperor, but um, but with the Dragon Emperor, you just want a lot of essence. A lot, a lot. Yeah. That, that's what I was thinking as well, because you want to make the most out of the the 12 inch banner and the six inch fight value. But anyways, we're, we're way off track. Anyway, um, yeah. Let us know yeah. comment section below <laughs> your tier list of the top three, but <laughs> until then, I guess, uh, Alessandro, thanks for joining us on this podcast, sharing your experience in, uh, in, uh, the ETC and just this sure. list in general. And, um, and also for anyone in the YouTube's comments, comment below what legions you want us to talk about next, as far as like seeing if we can get an expert player like Alessandro to, Tell us what we're missing. <laughs> so a lot of surprising things, it seems. So with that all being said, uh, we'll talk to you all very soon.